So, last time we had talked about the quote-unquote canceled trade between the Arizona Coyotes and the LA Kings, where it was reported by Nick Kiprios that Brant Clark was getting traded over from LA to Arizona in exchange for Jacob Chitrin. That trade ended up not coming through, it didn't happen, and we had insiders pretty much refuting the Kiprios assessment, saying just a few hours later, hey, I'm told that Brant Clark has been told by the Kings that he is not getting traded. And then it was like, yeah, no, Clark's agent himself has come out there and said that Brant has been told by the Kings he is not getting moved, so any sort of Clark for Chitrin deal that was reported is not going to happen. That was the cancelled trade, quote-unquote, because us, as fans, we had been led to believe this trade was going to happen for about six hours until it was bamboozled on us that, hey, it's not actually going to happen, Clark was told he's not getting moved. And so today what I wanted to do was go over to another trade that was kind of talked about. This is a trade that was rejected straight up and not necessarily cancelled. In fact, I don't even know if cancelled is the right word to use for the Chitrin and Clark trade idea that was floating around there, but instead we're going over onto an article published by Greg Wasinski on ESPN.com. Coyotes, Jacob Chitrin is a healthy scratch as the deadline occurs. This article was published about a week ago, but within it there is a pretty interesting point that Wasinski brings up regarding the LA Kings and another trade idea that floated around there that was apparently just straight up rejected by Arizona. Take a look at this part about halfway through the article. Sources told ESPN that the Coyotes and the Kings have engaged in talks regarding Chitrin in the past few days. The Kings have had interest in trading for Chitrin dating back to last season. LA owns its own first round pick for the next three years and has several players who were taken in the first round. D-man Brant Clark, Quinton Byfield, forward Alex Turcott, defenseman Tobias Bjorn fought Rasmus Kupari, Leish Anderson, and Gabe Velarde. Now, regarding this entire video idea that we're talking about, it doesn't actually show up in the article itself. Rather, if you go over to Wasinski's Twitter account and you see the tweet that he made promoting this article, this is where the meat and potatoes really comes in. Chitrin scratched indefinitely until a trade materializes. Regarding the Kings and the Coyotes talks, a source heard that LA offered Gabe Velarde and a first for Chitrin last summer, which obviously was not enough. Stay tuned. This is the idea that I wanted to talk about in this video. How Gabe Velarde in a first was the potential trade proposal by the Kings from last season only for the Arizona Coyotes to say, nah, that's not enough, we're not accepting that. Now, just to get things out of the way here, the LA Kings in the 2022 NHL entry draft had themselves the 19th overall pick that was eventually sent over to the Minnesota Wild. They used that to select Liam Ugrin, and the trade in which the Kings sent over that pick over to Minnesota was the Kevin Fiala trade. Fiala has been very good for LA this season, so I don't really think that's a move they necessarily regret. But it is interesting to note that apparently that pick, or maybe the 2023 first round pick that the LA Kings do indeed have, was floated around to Arizona in some sort of a Velarde for Chitrin swap. And the Coyotes ended up saying no. This is where things get interesting, because last season, Jacob Chitrin, you could debate that his value was arguably a lot lower than it is right now. Sure, he still has that 4.6 AAV deal that goes on till 2025, he is still valuable, he is still very good, but last year, Chitrin had 21 points in 47 games played. This season, he's got 7 more points in 11 fewer games, so he's actually produced a lot more than last season, he's playing a lot better, and as a result, you could definitely say that his value is much higher. There was some sort of a limbo from last season when Chitrin was coming off of that 18-goal year, where he was the top goal-scoring defenseman in the entire league, to what he was last year, where he was a minus 20, and he only had 21 points, and he was doing pretty okay, but definitely not at the same standard of success that he had accomplished the year prior. This year has sort of been a bounce back for Chitrin, which indefinitely has boosted his trade value. And so, to hear the Arizona Coyotes say from a year ago that Velarde in a first was not enough, right now it's gotten to a point where when fans are talking about an LA Chitrin trade, they're always saying, okay, they have to include one of Byfield or Clark. They have to. I know you had the Kings who came out there the other day saying that they're not going to touch Byfield and Clark, which is very fair. They definitely have the right to protect their players because these are very valuable young talents now, aren't they? 
But it is a pretty big indicator as to just how much Chitrin's value has grown when all of a sudden now it's like, okay, if you think about Gabe Velarde in a first, sure, a first round pick could probably be valuable, but... I mean, first round picks come and go. You got a lot of first round picks that are probably being offered everywhere. So it really comes down to the other assets that the Kings would be trying to send over to Arizona. And for Gabe Velarde, the guy hasn't played a game in a month. He's been out this entire time with injury. And I mean, look, in the limited sample he has played this season, he has looked pretty all right. 31 points in 45 games played. If you do the math over 82, let's do that right here. 31 divvy 45 multiplied by 82. He's on pace for a full season's point production of 57 points. Which is not bad, especially for a guy who is on his ELC, although you would have to sign him to an extension because he does expire at the end of this season. 23 years old, big center, right-handed guy. As we all know, Gabe Velarde had a pretty good profile heading into the NHL after being an OHL prospect. And after being so up and down his entire career with injuries, it was really nice just seeing Velarde really break out of his shell and become an established NHL player. And after seeing the growth, seeing the up and down from the AHL to the NHL, where he was a point-per-game AHL player last season for the Ontario Reign, seeing him really break out into a full-time NHL player that belongs in the league this year was a good sign. It's just... You know, you can't really predict these things with injury, and for the Arizona Coyotes, even last year, it's interesting to note that they didn't feel that Villardi in a first was enough for Jacob Chitrin. So, what about now? You know, if Chitrin is so much better than he was last year, what is that price now? I know we've made a lot of videos going over the trade price and the proposals and what other teams could be offering here, but... It is intriguing to me, from the LA perspective, trying to analyze where these conversations have gone, especially since LA seems to be the one team that is really buzzing all over this Chitron thing nowadays anyway. So, it's interesting to note, but let me know in the comments all your thoughts about this idea of Villardi and a first being rejected for Jacob Chitron. Do you think the price is significantly higher now, and if so, by how much? We had talked about a few names in the article by Greg Wasinski, Clark, Byfield, Turcott, Bjornfot, Kupari, Leish Anderson is over here. Of course, he wasn't an LA draftee. He was a New York draftee who is now on the LA Kings. So there is a lot of pedigree that the Kings have in their prospect system and their youth, but which one of these guys are going to be used to ultimately be the trigger man in some sort of a Chitron trade? I want you to tell me in the comments all your thoughts and opinions down below. If you're an LA Kings fan, what are your thoughts on the idea of trading away Gabriel Velarde? He's been under a really rough patch the past few years, and it's just gotten worse with his recent injury sustained a month ago. He's still sidelined to this day, so you can let me know your thoughts in the comments if you think Velarde should be considered in a trade, if you want to maybe double it down if it's Velarde and two firsts instead, if that's really what it takes to net you Jacob Chitron, do you go out there and accomplish that? If you're an Arizona Coyotes fan, what are your thoughts on Velarde and the first being rejected? Also, what are your thoughts on what else you can get for Chitron nowadays? The comment section is your floor, as always, and we're going to be leaving a link in the description to the Wasinski article on ESPN, but I hope you enjoyed this Vrishaj Rolls 99, and bye.